I'll read out some of the questions that we have now, so that in case we have a prof around, we can quickly do justice to some of these uh, uh, questions that we have in here. Okay. All right, the first question. A minute, please. All right, the first question is, um, why do Nigerians at home want to leave the country? And what will make them stay? Oh. Why do Nigerians at home want to leave the country? And what will make them stay, if at all? So, um, Prof, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Yeah. What will make Nigerians is just one thing, satisfaction. In life, there is what we call hierarchy of needs. When you are not satisfied with the lifestyle you are living and you know this is not the best you can get for yourself, despite you know the opportunities and the worth of you. You want to look elsewhere for where you can get that satisfaction. However, where you are going is not certain that you are going to get it there. But because people have been telling you, oh, when you get to abroad, you will find this, you will do this. And because you see some that will come back and start lavishing the wealth, as I would call it. You believe if you get there too, you will uh, achieve or acquire what you are going for. But then what we make them to come back? What we make them to come back is one thing that Moses has done now. Moses has given his experience and he has shown everybody by putting it down black and white that once you return, you can try. I was also in abroad before I came home. So I had one time be in Moses' shoes. But I knew, okay, I want to impact my, logic, my knowledge on Nigerian students. I came back home and to God, be the, to God be the glory, there is no regret. So if you know your words and you know what you can do by coming back home, that's what we call self-actualization then. Now, now you have the experience, everything over there. Now you want to come home and self-actualize. So that will make them to come back home. But let me say this. Not everybody will be an entrepreneur. Some, it is how they are. They want to be serving, serving. They don't want to be the boss that will give instruction. They don't want to lead. Even if you give them the role to lead, they will tell you, ah, please, I cannot. So, but you should know yourself. If you know you are the child that can do it, once you've gotten your training, come back home. And those who think abroad is everything, it is not so. We have so many people who have gone there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. So we also have Larry Jum Esso. I think he also wants to make a comment on the question asked. Thank you very much. Can you just repeat the question again, please? Uh, let me quickly also say before I answer the question to say, Moses Aditala, thank you very much for inviting me. Um, it's a pleasure to be part of this lunch today. And I think you've done a fantastic job. I've had the opportunity to go through the books and I saw quite a very interesting points made in that book. So well done. So the question again, please. Okay. So I think the question is, why do people want to um, travel um, that far and what can make them stay? Yeah, I've just said it. They want to jump up because they believe once they get there, their problem will be solved. Which is not yes. true. All right. Uh, so uh, Dr. Larry Jones, please. How can one build a life that enjoys the best of both worlds, home and abroad? How can one build a life that enjoys the best 
of both worlds home and abroad? Well, um, let me start by saying that a new society cannot be created by reproducing the repugnant past, however refined or enticingly repackaged. We as Nigerians need to understand our worth. We are a landlord. Now, what I mean landlord, we have what other countries don't have. And if I put it this way, we are more or less our own hurricane. We don't have it in Nigeria. Probably people need to know, hurricane, snow, bad weathers exist in this part of the world. Moses mentioned that in his book and also in his speech as well. But in Nigeria, we seems to have very, very lovely weather throughout the year. So how can one recognize the importance of benefiting from the experience overseas and also coming back to Nigeria. One thing is being able to identify opportunities. Africa is a land of opportunity. Just to mention one or two things. If there, there is no uh, uh, Congo, all the phones we're carrying today, we won't have it. 90% of the uranium used in the world as a whole from Congo in Africa. Nigeria have amazing resources. All we need to do is understand how we can tap into the resources. If we walk past opportunity every single day and not recognizing them. Please, if you want to take notes of the flight that leaves Nigeria, you see 95% of those who live are Nigerians living overseas. But when you see a flight coming to Nigeria, I will tell you almost 60% are foreigners coming to Nigeria. If you are leaving, because you cannot identify the opportunity in Nigeria and others can identify that. And telling you, if you go to Nigeria, you'll be kidnapped, you'll be killed, then you need to think twice. Why? Because there's, there's serious forces behind all those things. But you need not just take it for on, on, its, on its office. People live in Nigeria, millions of people live in Nigeria and they survive. And I really, really adore and appreciate Moses' courage to want to go back. I've been in UK for 40 years, I mean, sorry, US, Germany, and UK for 40 years. Yes, I'm established, but also I have every single bit of, of me in Nigeria. So I'm in and out. So I'm a classic example of what you're saying, having the best of both worlds. I lecture here at the University, I lecture here at the university in the UK. I also basically have a business in Nigeria that is thriving. I have the London Academy Business School in Nigeria as well. And also I've just launched the University of Entrepreneurship as well to cater for our online courses. So to answer the, the gentleman's question, you can have best of both worlds. You can have the experience in the UK and also establish in Nigeria. I will never look down on my great country, Nigeria. I will always respect what it has and do everything possible to help others to share in that same dream. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate you for that. All right, I can see that uh, Mr. Larry, if this one is raising up his hand, I wouldn't know. Uh, Mr. Larry, are you there, please? Hello, good evening, everyone. Can you hear good me? Evening, sir. Yes, we can. Okay, good evening, everyone, again. Um, I want to thank Mr. Moses Adetola for, I mean, the honor to, you know, be here at the virtual launch of his book. I read that book and um, I, I want to say a big well done you know, for helping young Nigerians like us who, I mean, I mean, it's a trendy thing in Nigeria now that everybody wants to tap up. I mean, so it is good to see someone tell his own story of what it is there and when he came back, what we can learn from it. Uh, I just quickly want to give a, uh, a response to the question that was asked earlier that, that said, why do Nigerians at home want to jump up? Coincidentally, um, I, I knew about this, and then some days ago I saw a poll on LinkedIn. Someone asked um, the same question. He asked the question, he said, what would it take you to live to what, how much would it take you to not want to relocate out of Nigeria? And he had 350K, he had uh, 500, 800, and he had a, a response that said, I'm working on it. And uh, after the poll, I saw the results yesterday. And the result of about 2,000 votes, about 52% people of the people said that uh, if they made as much as 800K, they won't relocate. And about 31% said that they are already working on relocating. Hello. So, 
Only so I, went, I, went through, I went through yeah. the comments and then okay. I realized that the top reasons why people want to relocate is first the earnings. If people have opportunity to earn more, and the 800,000, uh, according to the poll, is not even up to $2,000. So if maybe if Nigerians, obviously, look, going by the poll, if young Nigerians have more opportunities to earn more, more Nigerians will stay back. I also saw that some people said it's not even about the earnings. It's also about the quality of life because some people make as much as 1 million, 3 million, or still want to go. So there's still that part of the quality of life that you are likely to have there. Better roads, infrastructure, uh, a, a just society where no one can just come and boggle your home and catch your things away without finding out, like uh, Mr. Moses also shared in uh, right. some of his experiences. So uh, I think that these are the reasons why young Nigerians want to run out, Japa. Uh, but I also think that there is the mindset part to it. Some people just believe that if you do not step out of here, you can't succeed. And um, that's one of the things that I learned in the book that you can succeed anywhere. It's not really about the location. You know? So um, that's my submission. And thank you and congrats to Mr. Moses Aditola for this book. All right, thank you very much Sana, for that. We really appreciate you. All right, um, because of our time, we would like to take uh, just a few more questions, but then we would uh, appreciate if our, uh, okay. Would appreciate if our commenters can actually make it snappy so that uh, we can really wrap up at the earliest. All right, so uh, we would like to ask uh, Mr. Damola of Ntayo, there's a question for you, sir. Challenges of living abroad and why Nigerians in diaspora choose to stay abroad and not want to return home. Mr. Damola of Ntayo, what are Thank the you. challenges of living abroad and why Nigerians in the diaspora choose not to uh, return home? Please can you react on that just in about one to two minutes, please? All right. Thank you for that question. Um, again, I think there are various challenges. Um, one of them probably, one of the challenges of living abroad here, one is the weather, okay? The weather is not the best, okay? Today it can be very cold. It can be snowy. That's one of the things or one of the challenges here, at least in my personal opinion. Secondly, um, if you're not an entrepreneur, so if, you're, if you don't have a business of your own or a company or enterprise of your own and you're doing a nine to five, depending on your income bracket, if you are a high earner, then you pay more tax. In the UK, roughly around 40%. So just imagine uh, if you have, you're earning 100K a year and you have to pay about 40,000 in tax, um, roughly uh, within that year, that's a lot of money. So that's um, another challenge right there. So you are earning the money, but really it's going out. And it's not only going out with a tax, you still have to pay your council tax. You have to pay road tax for your cars. You have to, there are little taxes here and there. Before you know it, almost half of your money is gone into taxes. That's a major challenge. You've got your bills as well. And in the UK, at least I can say, um, it's a fast paced life. Everybody's busy, everybody's going up and down. You don't even know your neighbors sometimes. Uh, I see it as one of the challenges or one of the things you have to live with um, if you decide to live in the UK. Probably, maybe this is the same across Europe and North America. Now, Nigerians in diaspora choose to stay abroad and not want to return home for various reasons. Now, whether it's a legit reason or not, and I think we can put everybody into a box it's going to be different from one person to the other. So um, for some people, it's a case of in Nigeria, there is the security is not as good as what it is outside of the country. So can I drive at 12 o'clock at night? Can I drive at three o'clock in the morning? Is anybody going to stop me? Okay, how many times do I have to bribe the police before I return home in a day? Things like that, when you start thinking about it, the frustration, depend, depending on the kind of person you are, do you want to deal with that? Do you don't want to not want to deal with that? So these are some of the things. Also, in terms of infrastructure, what kind of road or roads do we have? Um, hospitals, if my child falls sick, can I take him out to the hospital without paying all of my money into hospital bills? Things like this. Um, begin to make you think. Right. I'm already established here. Maybe it's best for me to stay here. All right. Thank you very much for that. I really appreciate you. 
All right, um, Mr. Oyi Anyado, are you there, please? Just in about a minute, can you assist with just a reaction? Thank you. So first and foremost, a big congratulations to my brother, my friend, Adini Adetola Moses. I've known him for maybe 10 years plus now. So he's a real inspiration, a real pioneer, a real leader of distinction. So congratulations, my brother. I'm really excited for the second book, the third book, the fourth book, the fifth book, a whole catalog of books. So, so please, Rick, um, what was the question again? Sorry. All right. Um, the question states that what are the challenges of living abroad and why Nigerians in diaspora choose to stay abroad? I <clears throat> excuse me. I think it's a combination of security, contentment, um, 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 infrastructure. You know, yeah, Nigeria, Africa is the home of the brave. It's the new, it's the new world. It's the, it's the final frontier. But of course, many of us who are born and raised in the UK, it'd be now like, okay, do I really want to go back? And it's a step of faith. Some people are naturally scared. Some people, you know, don't want to go. So I think it's, I think it's more of an individual choice rather than a corporate choice. But of course, Africa, Nigeria has countless opportunities, but here in the UK, there's contentment, there's a, a solidified infrastructure and people are used to the, the, you know, what would be great in Nigeria is basic here in, in the UK, in London. So I think for me, it's an, it's an individual thing. Don't get caught up in a hype, but we've got someone like Moses who has, who has been there, or well, he's there now and he's, he's laid the foundations for many of us or many people that don't want to come out. So I think it takes a generation or a leader in a generation to go out there and do something, lay the platform, which he has done. And now it's for other people to now really say, okay, maybe it's time to go because Europe is crumbling, whether we like it or not. Even the, 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 the beauty of Europe or the UK is crumbling, Brexit, yeah. um, pandemic, COVID-19, whatever. So even now, I think in the next 10 years, we're going to see a large amount of people from the UK go over. But it's all about times and seasons and seasons and times. And Many people know that he's not ready to birth yet. So, I mean, Moses went by faith. He went by faith. He didn't have no choice but to go. So that is leadership 101. But for some of us and for some people, we know the times and seasons. So yeah, it's all about times and seasons. Build, build a capacity in the UK. And then when it's time to go, you flow. All right, sir. Thank you very much for that. Really appreciate it. It seems Mr. Tuji Shala would like to add a few words. Just in about a minute, please. We don't have time anymore. Thank you. All right. Hi, everyone. I hope everyone can hear me. Um, yes, we can. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, Bishop Moses, you know, as I call you, um, it's been a journey with you. You know, um, I saw you about six months ago in Nigeria. And uh, thank God for your life. You know, I'm always happy we've been together. I've uh, been part of the journey. We've worked together as a friend. You've done a couple of projects for me as well in my books and um, well, when it comes to the, you know, to the subject of living abroad or living anywhere, um, I, I think, you know, as uh, Damola said, and only, you know, there are a couple of challenges, especially for people who are living in UK and, are, and they are also thriving, you know, um, they've established a system and a structure. You know, the question becomes, now that you've got family, you know, what sort of quality of life do you want for your family you know what quality of life do you want for your children and all of that and don't get me wrong every country has their challenges you know there are pros and cons you know living abroad and all of that but you know as all you say the vision that you have for yourself uh, I've been in Nigeria I was born in Nigeria I was part of all the struggle when I left Nigeria I left to come and study and um, you know I got opportunity I embraced it you know I come often and on. So for me, I think personally, um, you know, people have their fears, people have their challenges. You know, I've had people saying that there are fantastic opportunity in Nigeria. I mean, it's everywhere, to be quite honest. You know, it's down to your mentality, it's down to, you know, where you see yourself being. And also the fact that you should not limit yourself to any country. You know, we are in the <laughs> it is a global era, right? It doesn't matter where you are, you can make your influence known in any country, you know, Uganda, Nigeria, America, or all of that. So what I will say to people is, you know, it does not matter where you are, 
you know, try to make yourself relevant, whether in Nigeria, whether abroad, you know, don't limit yourself to one particular place. Yes, Nigeria is good infrastructure issues, but wherever you are, make it thrive All right. you know, and give the best. All right, sir. Thank you very much for that. We really appreciate you. All right. Um, I would like to, please, before we go, we would like to appreciate everybody for the patience so far. What are the available opportunities in Nigeria to deal with? And how do we live a purposeful life? Do we have uh, Dr. Ulupancho um, Adetunji around? Dr. Ulupancho Adetunji, okay. If he's not there, all right. Can we call on uh, engineer Tony Bosoro? All right, that case they are not also online. Okay. Um, Mr. Afis Raji, are you there, please? Please unmute. All right. Yes, sir. can you hear me? Yes. Uh, good see. evening. Good evening. So, could you repeat the question again, please? All right. What are your available opportunities in Nigeria to build wealth? And uh, how do you live a purposeful life here in Nigeria? Oh, wow. Wow. Um, yeah, thanks. So, okay, for first of all, I just want to congratulate um, my brother Moses. Um, I really, really um, appreciate you and um, I'm encouraged by your steps. And as a few of other people have said, honestly, you've been um, um, amazing and um, just your whole um, um, blazing forward is really encouraging me. So to answer that question, um, I can see why Moses probably put my name down for this. Me and, and Moses done a, a lot of projects together. Um, I think um, when I was thinking of, so I'm based in the UK, but I've always wanted to come and do something back home. And um, from Moses, I learned a lot about the ter terrain. Nigeria is not somewhere you just go and dump yourself and say, I want to start a business. They will teach you and they will send you back from where you came from. Um, but Moses, um, really working with him, I learned a lot and um, it's helped me. So to answer that question, if you have a hundred grand in UK and you want to invest it, you might do okay. Your investment might grow 2%, 3%. Take that same 100 grand and put it in Nigeria. I can guarantee you, you'll do far more than you can do in UK. So for anybody that feels that UK is better, I, I totally disagree. Um, I think um, somebody said it earlier on that, um, I think it was Moses that said it, that poor people don't know how to spend their money. Um, the, it's not just that, it's the mass of people in Nigeria. In Lagos alone, the millions that's in there, any idea that you have that can get to the mass, will definitely work. So um, a few things I've learned. Don't go on your own. Find somebody that's ahead of you and learn from that person, which I thank Moses for, and then build a network around you. Everything we're doing in Nigeria at the moment is a network of people that's gone ahead, a network of people that knows what they're doing to avoid the mistake. So to answer that question once again, it's just building a safe network around you to help you doing what you're doing. That'll be my, um, my answer to that question. All right, sir. We really appreciate you for that. Thank you very much. All right. Um, do we have Dr. Tony to go around, please? Hello. Good afternoon. Oh, good evening. Yeah, good evening, sir. You have the floor, please. Uh, tell me what What's question you want me to talk about. Um, All right. So just about a minute. I'd like you to quickly react on the question how can one be the life that enjoys the best of both worlds, home and abroad? Right. Okay. Um, I want to congratulate, first of all, me. Um, I want to say to everybody here, I'm not very surprised at what he is producing. Uh, I've known him for a very long time now. Um, he's a kind of a, a juggernaut of intelligence. And if you need any kind of uh, discussion, if, if you open a discussion in any field, any area, Moses will have something to say about it and it will be a beneficial discussion. Um, so I'm not surprised you're bringing these out, um, the, uh, but I know that this is just um, the, a very tiny little one. The best is yet to come. More is coming from you. I know that very, very much, very much so. Um, well, I, I live in the UK and um, I have an already established system uh, that I work with. I have an established business that I work, I work with. And um, 
I, I, I'm, I, I started by my own self simply because as an individual, one of the things that I've noticed in us Nigerians abroad is just simply the, the, the kind of mindset you have with determining your pursuit and what you pursue, what you want to do. It's because sometimes as Nigerians, we're really very determined and we want to achieve. But sometimes your sense of determination can also be a weakness because whatever you focus on will determine what you're going to do. I mean, it's, it's possible to have both worlds, but I think first of all, individuals have to understand what is it that you want to do. Um, in the UK, you have something that is generating funds for you. There are lots of challenges in you living in the UK. A lot of people have mentioned that. And some of them can be things like culture. Uh, I mean, the, you, see, you, you, you have a, a culture, assist, culture system here, which sometimes people find very hard to adjust to. But after a while, people then adjust because of this, the, the, the kind of um, say, you know, resources they get, what they gain from it, the advantages of living in the United Kingdom, they're so advanced. So as a result of that, people tend to want to stay here more. And the other part of that is, what do you want to do in Nigeria? You've got to absolutely establish. You don't need to be, I don't believe anyone needs to be an entrepreneur or established entrepreneur before you go to Nigeria. You've got to first of all deal with your own mind. What is it that you want? Not everything you do is going to give you that success. I know I'm taking a lot of time. Uh, I'm sorry, 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 sorry for that about that. But it's just a very, very tasty, tasty, tasty topic. That two minutes is not going to do justice to it. So I'm just going to stop there. But it's possible. You, but you got to build a very good network of people around you in Nigeria and just make sure that coming in, you're coming back to Nigeria in safe hands. You can work in Nigeria with people to help you establish whatever you think you can do. You've got to establish that. You don't have to be an entrepreneur. You just have to be motivated and focused and determined to do whatever you want to do. Want to do. And you can live in the UK and manage both together, which at the moment, um, I am doing something like that with the support of Moses. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thank you, Doctor. We really appreciate you for that. You. Just to inform all our participants that we shall be wrapping up in about a few minutes. So we thank you for your patience so far. And we are really grateful for the time you've carved out to really attend this event. All right. Um, without wasting much of our time, do we have um, Mr. Tosin Sanders in the building? All right, if not. Uh, oh, yes, I'm here. Okay, just in about a minute, sir. We are wrapping up now. Okay, cool. Yes, sir. Uh, so, what's the question for me? Please. Yeah, the question is why do Nigerians at home leave the country and why? Wow. What would make them stay, if at all? Think you have uh, well, uh, in, in two minutes, uh, I will just add to some, some of the great points that have been made by my predecessors. Uh, for me, I think one of the reasons why people would want to leave Nigeria or another country is so many reasons. For example, uh, people want to have a better future for their children. They've been through the struggles in Nigeria and they're asking themselves if the children will have to continue that struggle. So that's a, a, a major one. Uh, in addition to that also, People, you know, we have, we've read, we've seen about how senior citizens in other, you know, advanced countries are we taken care of. Some people are expecting or looking forward to have such better care when they grow up to be senior citizens. Um, in Nigeria also, we've got massive education, we've got a lot of experience, people struggle to get jobs. And they are aware of other places where, you know, uh, where we have shortage of talent. So they're asking themselves, uh, won't I not go there and have a better future? We know it's about demand and supply. So I will just add these few points to other great points that have been made by people who have spoken before me. Uh, thank you very much. So I hope I'll be, I'm able to manage my time uh, well. So thank yes. you, great effort, Moses. I yes. uh, appreciate that um, book. We've known each other for over 22 years, and uh, I can tell you, it's a great person. So I'm privileged to know you, and I look forward to having your second book. <laughs> So thank you all. <laughs> thank you so much, uh, my very good uh, child and friend, and everyone who has made a comment. I really appreciate that. I think uh, Mr. Chaldenson would like to make a brief comment. Um, in general, he's been very supportive. So I'd like him to be one minute to just make his comments. Thank you, sir. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. yes I'm 
Yeah, I'm Charles Nelson. Um, I've I known. We can hear you. Moses. That's great. I've known Moses for quite a quite some time. I'm based in UK, and um, through Moses, I was motivated by what you know what he's done so far back in Nigeria. Um, I'm originally from Ghana. My mom is half Ghanaian and half Nigerian. And um, through those times, I've been motivated to actually build a property in, in Ghana and also basically, you know, put it out for renting just like buy to let. Um, and that was the sheer confidence and the boldness that I learned from um, from from Moses. And um, um, to be honest, that was, that was so inspiring. Um, here in UK, he was successful by his own you know, by his own, you know, reign. Um, he made a decision to go back to Nigeria. And I think that was extremely bold. And if anything I can pick out from that is, is that boldness. And I'm learning a lot from him. And as other people who shared that they're having the, you know, the best of both worlds, they live in UK, they can go back to Africa and stay there for some time and do other things as well. Um, for me, that is what I enjoy most, the, be the benefit of both worlds. And um, hopefully, eventually, we, when the time is right, we'll relocate to, to you know, to Africa. Just like what Onye said, there's no pressure. Uh, um, just you must know what you want uh, um, in life. You don't just go because somebody else has gone. But surely in Africa, there is a lot of opportunities uh, um, that can be tapped into. And, and once you know what you want, um, you know, you can actually become successful anywhere in the world. So Moses, thank you so much for being an inspiration to myself and my family, my wife, you know, you know all of us. And thanks for all the website, everything that you, you know, you did for us. That's what I can Thank say. You very Thank much. You.